Hey, hey, it's your lousy Florida traveler. So today, we're going back down to Osceola. And we're in search of one of the smugglers' home ruins. It was burnt down. A lot of people has approached me and give me details about this place. Told me about where it was at. And I'd heard about this over the years. But they all described an Olympic-sized swimming pool and they all described a gigantic fireplace. So there should be something left there. There should be. I did a little scouting on a road that I was told goes in there about a week or two ago, and that road is there. It's grown up. I only went to a point where there was a gate. I was told that that gate had been pushed open by a tractor when they went down there to serve a warrant. So I did find that gate last weekend. So we're going to go back down that same path today and see if we can find this house. We're not going to go to slandering anybody, so we're just going to refer to this as Mr. Joe's house on the Osceola River. I invite you to join along let's go see and let's see if the stories they told us is true about the size of this swimming pool. See if maybe we can find this brick fireplace even after it burnt and the storms over the years. There should be some type of sign of life here. They talked about a dock that went out on the water. So if you're interested in it and you want to see some beauty and let's slip down there and see if we can find Mr. Joe's place. I invite you to come on and let's take a little trip. The ditch on either side. So we definitely on the roadbed and you can tell nobody's really been down it with any vehicles. So here's the plan. Like I told you, there's supposed to be spurs that come off of this where they had campers set up for people who were watching the smuggling operation. So we're gonna slip down this road. We're gonna note the spurs. We're gonna try to make it first and find where the house was. And if we have time, we may come back and do a little bit of exploration along these spurs. So let's get on down there. You see like this tree hanging over? You could tell there's been no four-wheelers or vehicles down here. So anybody that would have come down here would have come in on foot. The size of these cabbages grow up in this road. One guy told me there's supposed to still be a barn standing down here. Ooh, there's an old survey marker. Check that out. Broke over. That is definitely a survey marker. It just keeps getting thicker. From what I read, Supposedly this boat has been closed since 81, 1981, when this property was seized. All right, so here's our first little spur goes off to the right here. All right, I see some gates. Oh yeah, these gates are definitely damaged. Let's take a look here, old panel top gate. Still got the chain hanging on it. With the lock, so the chain is still closed. You can see where an eyeball had been pulled out. Now look at the stress where that chain was pulled. Now let's look at this other side. Oh yeah, that, that gate was definitely forced open. And the man that told me said that his kinfolk was part of the box down here and described pushing this gate open. Just You can still see the gate. And here's a spur that goes off to the left. Right, now when I did scout in here the other day, right here's where I turned around. Didn't get sure enough, swampy. Mm -hmm. and swamps on both sides. We're still headed that way toward the mound. So far we hadn't lost any hikers. Looks like we're coming to another spur up here. Okay, I seen this from back here and thought to begin with it was lumber. But then I gave up on it. That's some kind of old structure of some sort. See the wood guy almost looks like a ladder stand of some sort. And there's some two bys there with nails in them. This looks like a little tram coming off the side, so this may have been one of the smugglers camp out. Well, we have come to a hindrance and I don't know that we can find a way around it. There's a ditch dug across the road connecting the swamp. So apparently at one time there must have been a bridge here. So now that we come to this, we got to looking and thinking, and that road does go on through. We may have to come back and, and cross it, but according to the GPS, and we're getting touchy soon, and we've done past our location. So we're going to back up and see if we can find a trail in. Based on that knowledge, we're out blindly walking between the roadbed and the river to see if we can see any signs of anything. So as we're walking here, Seth notices some metal poles. There's a metal pole in the ground. They do talk about chain link fences down here. Here's another metal pole. There's a metal pole. <coughs> it's a straight line of metal poles. 
<clears throat> and these do look like chain link metal poles. So I would say we're in the right area. There's a line of what looks to be steel poles. I would guess chain link. And they're all the way through there. Let's see if I can zoom you where you can see. If I quit, boun if I quit bouncing you around. I got three to my right that you don't see on camera. There's that one, that one. It's hard to tell, but they go right on through the swamp. And we got us a concrete structure over here. We've noticed several things, so we're gonna stop right here and look. Here's some posts of some sort. Look at them posts. Them posts been there a while. And here's some sort of concrete structure. Let's see what this is. The pad. So we got the top cleaned off of this. I see what looks like some grounding wire, grounding rods of some sort, maybe. Or rebar. And there's three pipes coming up to it. Other than that, I can't tell. Let's walk over here. I think Jason found an engine block. For a point of reference, that concrete slab we found is over by that palmetto. Here, we got some PVC, but here, Jeff says he just found the swimming pool. Just out in the middle of the woods. Walk over here where Chef is. He says he found the swimming pool. There's the concrete structure over there that we found a while ago. There's another, some type of steel pole. I don't know. Looks like it might have been. Okay, look. It's a chain link fence. Went all the way down. So we got another piece of chain link. So they had a double chain link fence around this place. What it looks like. Oh, look at there. All you people who give me information, I sure appreciate it, because we have just found it. Look at here. We have found Old Joe's place. Look right here. That's your diving board stand. So this would have been your swimming pool that's filled in. Let's get over here. Check it out. It's been filled in with debris. Block, brick. But you can clearly see the swimming pool. You can see the sides are collapsing over there. You can see the coping that would have held the liner in. Is that amazing? There's where it come back to fill the through. You can see part of it's tore up. Let's see if we can find a chimney. That's what everybody talked about. But be careful where you're walking. But now seeing all this pushed in here, it may be in there. they may have pushed the chimney and all in here because you could tell that was dumped in here. Look, there's part of the liner still there. I, they may have, have pushed everything else and dumped it in there. So we might not find that now. But we have definitely found one of the smugglers' homes. This is the base we're walking on here, I believe. We've now split up. We're on the creek hunting for this dock that I was told about. I believe it's going to be over to the left because I can see that island and the man marked on a GPS picture for me. That was about the location where he showed. We're gonna ease over and just see if we can find it. We're right on the edge of the old silla. I see a big post right there laying in the water. But that could have washed up from tidal surges on this river close as we are to the mouth. As a side note, we're getting close to the area. If some of you follow on Facebook, may have seen where I posted this stuff about the Confederate attack on Union where they killed the people, the soldiers. That it was right up the river from this area. Hey, I found another slab. Found another slab right here in the middle of nowhere. Not sure what this would have been, but it is a slab of some sort. Okay, it goes all the way out to the river right there. Hey, there's a sign on the end of it. And it definitely runs to the edge of the water right to where this sign is. I see he's up here. Whatever these signs said, you can't read them anymore. I see a survey marker in the water. You can see an old post right there. It leads right out here. From out there. And this concrete walkway that we just found that goes out, it's about 200 yards from where we just showed you that pool. Definitely. That's definitely a TV antenna. Okay, here's another gate post. The other one I just showed you is right there. It's hard to see, I know it's dark in here and the sun's glowing. And then here's one by this tree. So we are on the roadbed. So we found it, we down here at Mr. Joe's old place. 
There ain't no doubt this is where it was. You see this swimming pool. People describe the size of this swimming pool. You can see the uh, diving board supports behind it just out in the swamp. There ain't even a road coming in here no more. You can see where the water was took in. I had expected to find that brick chimney and a couple things, but based on the evidence that I found, you can tell that after, I guess after the house burnt, maybe years later, maybe even when they cut that creek that we looked at that you seen. I don't know, but at some point, somebody's coming here and dumped the remains of this house in this big swimming pool. And it was large. The people was right that told me they'd seen it. And I know that part of this was the house because you can see the chimney flute that's in the photo. It's in this pool. So all the rest of the stuff that you've seen, we're still going to continue around it. Hey, we found it, the Wasilla smuggling operation, one of the, one of the people's house. Uh, as we said, we just refer to him as Mr. Joe. A lot of fencing out here, chain link poles everywhere. There were multiple fences around the property. Not sure what that was about. Before we go, just as a note, I want you to pay attention to that little clump of trees up there as far as they are. That's where this pool starts, just about, about six foot out in front of that. And we're walking down it here. And if you look right there, you can see the coping off the sides and it's still going straight. And we're trying to find the end. As one final reference before we slip off here, I'm standing now where I believe the house would have been. The Osceola River is right there. I mean, you can see the water through the trees. So we come around, remember standing inside the area where I think the house would have been. And the pool area we found is over here. So if I'm missing something, some of you locals know a little more about this, let me know. We'll make another little trip. We found the well pipe over here. And here's a lot of different bricks and blocks scattered throughout and the bands that was in the picture you seen. And then over here oh, is an old hot water heater. There's a piece of a boat motor. And Seth just found something to a boat motor. Let's go over and look at that. And this is on, if you're facing the river, the right side of the house. There's the boat motor. Yep, old boat motor out there. And you can see some buoys right there, crab buoys. I would say this is definitely part of Mr. Joe's area. Now we're just slipping back between Mr. Joe's place and the road and the river, seeing what we can see. We headed back toward the trim and we come right here. Just to give you a size comparison. I measured these boots so when I was in the woods and I found something, I have an idea how long they are. I wear a size 13 and a half. These boots are 14 and a quarter inches long. And you see how much is out the other end. And the length of this pier. This is out here in the middle of nowhere. That stuff is old. Is this our road bed? No. You sure? Yeah. Many, many creeks in this area. A little tributary. I don't want to eat a cross right here. Look back on dry ground. We're headed back to the main road now to see if uh, we can track down some of them side trails. I was told about a barn that was supposedly still standing in the woods and we haven't found that, so we're looking for that. Well, I think our fearless navigator has got us lost. All right, so our navigator did know where he was going. We did make it back to the main little tram now we're working our way back and we're going to slip down each one of these little side creeks and see what we find. Or side trams, these side trams. We're headed back now in the direction where I showed you where we came through the gate that had been busted open over. Here at the gate we're having to climb back over the tree. Back out, just think about the desolation of the place you just seen. I know it was seized in 81 and burnt. Either at the end of 81 or beginning of 82. I think it was like December of 81, if I remember right. So, uh, right here, so here's one of them little trams. And so you can see if there was any sign of a road into that place, it's long gone. Now, this may not look like a spur, but if you pay attention, on this side you see a creek with a culvert. And then it comes out over here. That's the main tram there that came in. So, there's only one reason to put a car in that's to drive over. You see that big cabbage tree, but this was definitely at one time a road. So let's walk down it and just see where it goes. If nothing else, we'll see some pretty nature. 
We'll be looking off to the sides to see if we see any structures or bricks or blocks. Or... This may have been one of the campsites. That's the boat ramp is right there. I can actually see the boat vehicles at the boat ramp on my right hand side. Seth has just spotted something. Okay, he's found some concrete structures here. See that? And then there's a looks like a fire pit. Let's walk over and see what that is. This is the concrete piece we found. Seth found something over here. Let's just slip over here and see. Let's see if we can figure out what that is. Piece of metal laying in front of it. Look like some kind of oh that ain't a concrete structure. That's fiberglass. Some kind of fiberglass tub, ain't it? Hmm. So we're coming back out on our trail now, headed back. And to imagine at one time, seafood trucks was coming down this road. Ten wheelers. Kind of hard to imagine now. But, so we're on our way back out right here. And just easing down the creek. We're almost to the main road coming in the Mandalay. Look at this little spot I just noticed. If you look across the creek, you see that little tree there, little bottle. If you look right there in the bank, you can tell that's bags of concrete that's been piled. I don't know how well you can tell it in the cell phone camera. But that's what that is. That's been reinforced with concrete right there. And just up above it looks like some type of pilings or something. Some type of wood, might just be driftwood. I can't get over there. Well, I would definitely say we have found the place. It looked like at some point they come in here with some equipment and cleaned up the ruins on top and dumped them in the pool. You seen where the creek bank was cut in half to keep it from going on down, so we couldn't really go any further. It was a, too big a creek on each side. So. But I got a fellow that's supposed to bring me in later on on a boat. So I'm hoping we'll get to get on the other side of that, maybe see what was down there. I did not find the barn that I had been taught, told about. You may have heard me mention that throughout the video about the barn. It may have been further on down. So that'll be another trip. It was kind of cool though. I mean, think about it. How many times you ever walked up on an Olympic sized swimming pool in the middle of nowhere? You could tell there was no roads left coming in there. Whatever roads there were, there were vague roads in the first place. And according, to the analysis made by the government when they went in there and assessed it and was trying to seize it, the place was valued at $250,000 back in 79 or 80, I can't remember exactly which year. Anyhow, we went out there and found it, seen what it looked like. We're gonna be on the hunt because there's a couple more smuggler places that burnt down. One of them we're not gonna be able to get to. It's on still a piece of family land and there's other buildings there and it's private property so we're not going there but one of the others it's not on private property it's on state management land not sure what's in there if anything's left in there but we're gonna be looking for it so y'all join me back next time we're gonna take another little trip appreciate y'all watching me